Uh, hello, my name is Matthew, and this is my good friend Ben. Hi. And Ben's going to tell me about a book that he's read. So we're going to do that. What I'm going gonna, gonna to try out my uh, book review YouTuber with that hat on. Ben's first big book review. Yeah, love that. Uh, so my wife recently read uh, Endurance, and it's about uh, Shackleton's Incredible Voyage. Um, and she said, I think she was about halfway through, and she's like, Ben, you have to read this. Um, and I read books. I, I'm not anywhere near what, what Matt is, but I, I listen to audiobooks when I'm in my workshop. And I what, probably, like 50 books a year probably is my... What kind of books do you like? Uh, I'm a sucker for, like, Lee Child and, like... Um, is that, like, Thriller? Yeah, like Jack yeah. Reacher, the Bourne books. Like, I've read all those. And uh, I recently got into Eric Carr, who's a ex-seal. Um, I just like, I just like that stuff where it's tough guys and guns and, um, I, I was never in the military, but I, I'm a tough guy that likes guns too. So I, I think they're just like up my alley, you well, know? Also, we, we should say you're a Sherlock Holmes fan. I love, yeah, I love Holmes. I've read all, everything multiple times. Um, yeah, I, I do read, I probably read more than I think I do. Just in the way of the audiobooks, you know. Um, last week I went camping just over, overnight by myself to kind of just be in nature and have some quiet. And I did the most, uh, uh, what's that word? You said cliche. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the most cliche thing you could do. I stopped at an antique store out in Western Maryland and, and I was like, if I find Into the Wild, I'm gonna buy it and read it by a lake, you know. And who, I, who wrote in, Into the Wild? I don't remember. <laughs> there was the movie. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The movie, obviously. I saw that, I, but I never read the book. And I, I thought, you know, everybody always says that it's great. Um, I've only, I've only listened to the soundtrack, the Eddie Vedder soundtrack. Oh yeah, yeah, that's right. He, he, um, the, the author of that book was a writer for like Outside Magazine. Okay. And and he basically just wrote a, um, a piece on this kid who shouldn't have gone into the wild of Alaska and uh, turned into a book because everybody liked it so much. Um, so I'm almost through with that. But the Shackleton book, back to the, the star of the show. So it's called Endurance? It's and called Endurance. That was the name of the boat. And what, who, who wrote it? Uh, was it Lansing? Eric Lansing? Eric Lansing. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'll look it up. We can look at it later. I'll, uh... So it's Alfred Lansing. Alfred Lansing. Um, so basically, this guy, just tough as nails, the ho probably the hardest human being that's ever. This is Shackleton. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Ernest Shackleton was just a, just a, as hardcore as. I mean, he he was like, I need a bunch of men, right? So he had these flyers up. What time period? I think it's in the aughts. Okay. Oh six, maybe in ten, eleven. I can't okay. I can't really remember. Might have been. Early part of the last century. Oh yeah, yep. Big wooden boat, and crap happened where he's like, "I need this boat," and they were like, "We don't have that boat, but we got this boat." And he's like, "That'll do," you know. And then he writes a poster, puts these flyers out, in search of men half as hard as me, and you'll be <laughs> you'll be good enough too, you know. And and so he assembled this group of guys, and they you know they all had their roles. There was a photographer. There was a. a, a guy like journal there were a bunch of guys journaling what was, what was the mission the mission was to go to antarctica okay and uh i i believe that their goal was to travel antarctica they want to go there and, and and do it you know and they i think they launched off the coast of england and stopped in south america or you know it's like this big journey and anyway they they go <laughs> So they get on the boat. They feel pretty prepared, you know. They got all their gear, and, and uh, this is back in the day of wool, no Gore-Tex, you know, so a lot of wool and a lot of fur. And uh, they had these big mittens, these big, gigantic leather mittens that hung around their neck, right? They have photos of this stuff, the whole journey, because there was a photographer, and they have photos of literally these men in camps that, that they had set up. So basically, they, they're going and going and going, and they hit some ice, 
with the big boat and they think, oh, we'll just wait for it to, to kind of thaw and move around and, and we'll be able to get out of here. And I, I think it took like two days, three days, and it was very apparent that there was no way that that boat was going to move. So they, they got like stuck right. in frozen water? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they kind of hit like a, a patch of ice and the, the way that the hull of the boat wedged in, it, it kind of just enveloped them. And they were like, oh, crap, we'll get out and set up a camp so we can, you know, at least get food and, and just kind of wait till the boat maybe gets loose. Stuck. Yeah. So like two or three days go by and the whole boat goes and sinks. Yeah, so they, <laughs> they were sitting around, <laughs> they're sitting around like at camp thinking, you know, it'd be nice to get that boat unstuck. And they'd hear like crack and they're all like, are they on like a little boat? They, the boat they took down there was pretty freaking big. It was like a three-mast uh, big wooden ship. When they left the ship, did they like leave the ship on another little boat? Well, no, they just hopped out onto the ice. <laughs> okay. <laughs> they, didn't, they didn't need, a, you know, any kind of little rescue boat or anything. So they had a couple, I think they had three other wooden boats, like uh, dinghies, uh, that were, were part of the big ship. And so they, they freed those before the, the okay. Endurance sank. And uh, and they got these boats onto the shore, and uh, so they could you know paddle somewhere if they needed to vacate. So the area that they landed on is called Elephant Island, and uh, they actually run a lot of cruise lines. Run when you do an Antarctic cruise, you can come down the, the tip of South America, and they'll actually go to Elephant Island. Is that like today? Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, yeah. Nowadays you can go down there and, and check out where Shackleton's crew was. Wow. Um, and so the, you know, a lot of the, the, the main stuff to me that's so impressive is these guys got there with paper and dividers and sextants and the real old school way, no GPS, none of this bull crap with no fancy helicopters technology. and nobody's saying like, it's over there and like radio comms and everything. None of that stuff. These, these guys were men and they're going, judging by the sun, you know, that kind of just pure pure uh yeah they're, they're yeah. stranded with nothing in the middle of nowhere and, and nobody knows what they're doing nobody, nobody knows, knows they're they there in the most like hostile environment you could think of pretty brutal, brutal. real brutal and they went down at, you know when it was a little warmer um whatever that means in antarctica i don't know it's 20 degrees um everything's Cold. still frozen yeah yes. bad <laughs> So I, I think I think it was about 24 men somewhere in that neighborhood. You'll have to forgive me because it's been a handful of months since I read the book, and I've read more books in between then and now, so I kind of forget numbers. But it was just, it was under, probably under 30 men, mm -hmm. and they had a ton of dogs, and the dogs were, were for sledding. They were going to sled transcontinent Antarctica, and, and they had all the stuff to do that if everything went as planned. They were as prepared as they could be um so they hit elephant island they get into this little camp but it was exposed it was really exposed a lot of a lot of elements a lot of wind that they couldn't deal with and and uh you have to imagine you're wet and cold you want to find something that's a little less exposed so at points they use their boats as shelter they would tip their boats up or they would put their boats upside down and just get under it which sucks i mean i can't it, it's like you got a wooden tent and you're all like this trying to stay warm and cuddle with your dude um which you know they just did what they had to do so uh for months they were kind of like what are we gonna do you know and they're surviving they're just living and and they all had their jobs like i said and they they all kept saying they they all were like look shackleton's the man and whatever Shackleton says, we're just going to do it because he's he's a beast. Like he he navigated us from our home to he, to Antarctica. Nobody coming to Antarctica. Like it's and, ridiculous. And he still hasn't given up. Like he's still no. thinking. No, they were going Shackleton. Are we screwed? He's like, no. What are you talking about? We're fine. We got three little dinghies. We're two thousand, eight thousand, thousands of miles away from stuff. We got papers that have line drawings on it. And a couple dinghies were fine. And so the morale was just 
unflappable. Un yeah, I mean, these guys, like I said, the hardest men, right? They're just unbelievable. So they're like, all right, Shackleton said it's fine, we're fine. So they just hunted, they got some seal blubber, they eat this, they had their rations that they brought for their trip, bullion cubes, I mean, hateful stuff to eat. Just, they were cooking blubber like it was, you know, filet mignon. Oh, blah, I got my blubber today, you know? They had coffee rations and cigarette rations and they had guns and ammo so they could hunt. Well, then stuff started getting a little rough. It's getting cold, so their dogs turned to dinner, which is brutal, but kind of a blessing because they had them, you know? And they, they these guys didn't want to kill their dogs. These, these were dogs, these were, they were like family dogs. But, you know, you slept together, you, everybody was like a big family and these dogs were no exception. So it wasn't like a, they didn't take it lightly. Um, also, they, they realized that their plans were kind of annihilated. So they weren't gonna be sledding anywhere. They were, it's not like the dogs were even gonna work or be doing their job. So they'd be sitting around frigid and instead of letting them get emaciated, they decided it was best to eat them. Um, so they kept going and kept going. Well, at some point, Shackleton's like, we're gonna go, we're just gonna go back. We're gonna find some help at this place that they landed, like their halfway point or something. They're, they're like, like another island? They're gonna try to like get to another island? Uh, it was actually like, um, man, I'm so unprepared for this. I, it might've been another, yeah, yeah, it was another island because on, on like the south side, uh, there was this camp, like a fishing camp, like where people operated off of this coast. Um, but then there was another place on the top of this island that was like a big port that they could have, like if they got there, they were like golden, right? Okay. So they leave like most of the guys back at Elephant Island, Antarctica. And there's photos of this where there's all these men on the shore. <laughs> Good job, like, you got it. Shackleton's the man. Boats are leaving. They're like getting into boats to go. There's, there's a boat. Yeah. Just, and they're like, we're gonna go get help, you know? Yeah, No, wow. No big deal. And so <laughs> they navigate, right? And they, the way that they said this, because nowadays, like somebody retraced the steps of Shackleton's journey. They, they know enough, they have all the, all the recording that they were doing real time. Because they were writing the whole time too. Oh right? my gosh, they kept exhaustive notes. They had all their travel, you know, notes or whatever. Marginalia, logs. logs, yeah. Yeah, so, because these guys were baller navigators. I mean, these, you're, they could have, they could go anywhere with a, with a boat and a piece of paper. So they're like, Nowadays, it would be impossible, right? <laughs> and documentation is an, an important part of these kind of journeys. Oh, yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. Because if they find them dead, they at least have, you Something know, to, yeah, this is what box. happened. You can learn from it. Um, so, so they said that the way the currents run, that they had to aim a certain way, and, and they're expecting to be pushed, you know, a certain amount. And they said that if they had missed by like, it, it was not looking good. They, it, there was basically no chance they were gonna get to this little island, you know. They're, they're thousands of miles and they got to the bottom, they hit the coast. They make right? it. They make it. But where the camp was that they were trying to go to, like something was happening, the currents, they couldn't do it. Um, and so they were like, well, crap, what are we gonna do? And they're like, we're gonna go A to B and they're gonna go as the crow flies from the south coast where they landed to the north coast where this fishing outfit is. And this is another thing that people have done with full crews, all modern equipment, and they said it sucked. Like they retraced the steps of these men, there were just cliffs, chasms, big giant drop-offs. Everything's covered in ice. There's nothing that's hospitable. They, they just somehow yeah. these guys had enough in them that they 
they did it. They you know, it. they yeah. they freaking this hike wasn't even. You're, you're like listening to it, and they're like, they would go up this cliff, right? Freaking ice, right? Go up this cliff, and they'd go over the peak, <laughs> and they'd go, nope, can't do it. So they'd go down the cliff, and they'd go over like a couple miles, and they'd go up a cliff. Nope. So they go back down the cliff, and you're you know, they have these ice axes, and they're using those as like staircases and. Yeah. Oh, just craziness and finally they get to a point where Shackleton's like screw all this this is the one we're going down it's gonna be fine and they do it and it's fine and they get, <laughs> I mean it's really really unbelievable so they keep going keep going and finally they can see evidence that they're close to this fishing town you know on this north coast of whatever I can't remember the island I'm sorry you can read the book <laughs> um, they get there and they come walking down, right? And they, these guys are just, they big beards, long hair. It's been two years. Oh, wow. Two years. Forgot to mention that. <laughs> this whole ordeal's two years in. <laughs> no big deal, guys. We'll find another seal and pop at one and just eat all the blubber. It's oh fine. My God. Two years these guys did this crap. And so they walk down to this fishing camp, and these men are like, they can't, there's men walking from an area of this island that's, you cannot travel by foot. You can't, there's no, there's nowhere that they could be coming from. Walk down. <laughs> and the guys are like, who are you? Where do you, where did you come from? And he says, I am Shackleton. <laughs> and they knew who he was because he was such a boss. They freaking... <laughs> Word had got out, these psychos went from England to Antarctica, nobody's heard from them in two years, and there he is standing there, it's me, and I got back to civilization, and my men are in Antarctica, and we're gonna get a boat, and we're gonna go freaking get them. And they did. They went back and got them. And guess how many guys died? How many? None. Everybody lived. Everybody lived. That's incredible. Those were men, and I think, <laughs> Everybody can learn a lesson because life is so easy now. We have to make up problems. These guys had real problems and they all went, eh. So let me ask it's you. It's fine. <laughs> let me ask you. Uh -huh. Would you recommend the book? Really good book. Really good book. I think, I think it's well known. I would imagine it's quite an incredible story. It's, it is great. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, at least Google the photos because you'll see You'll see these men that just did not waver. A couple, you know, a few of them had a, a few episodes mentally where they were like, boy, this really sucks. You know, it's just tough. And I have people back home that I'd like to see. But man, those are also legitimate complaints. For sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 And, you know, I think one guy lost a part of his foot or, or something from uh, frostbite because um, they were just wet and cold the whole time two years of that of that and uh but really on the other side of it everybody was like unscathed and, and learned <laughs> learned a lot about survival on you know the hardest continent in the world and, and just un unbelievable highly recommended look at those photos they'll they'll make you feel i don't know if i can link photos i'll, I'll see if i can do that oh man yeah just a simple google search yeah, I'll put I'll put information down at the bottom. Yeah, yeah it's great. Gosh, I'll read it again sometime soon because it's just I, I sometimes I need a reminder that this is all the stuff I do is not very hard. <laughs> so you know how I normally like wrap up all like saying my goodbyes. Mm -hmm. Well, this is your review, so you're gonna have to do the whole thing and then end it. I'm gonna leave I'm, I'm gonna leave you. Oh, to okay. End it. All right. Well, thanks, Matt, for having me uh be on your channel and thanks everybody for watching uh on behalf of matt and from me because i do appreciate you watching matt's videos it really has helped his whole channel click this thing and that thing <laughs> push that one if you want a reminder <laughs> hit that one and s you'll stay informed of any new videos if you click that button um i'll see you again i'm sure on Matt's channel, you can go over to my channel. Uh, it's Ashes Remain Band, Ashes Remain Music 
on YouTube. Maybe there'll be some book reviews popping up. <laughs> yeah, you might. I don't know. I could review books over there on that channel. Uh, so yeah, they just say uh, leave a comment if you'd like. Leave a bottom. comment, a like, a subscription would really help. Smash all the buttons. And uh, we'll see you again soon. Bye.